Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Aquatic Morning Show, where the Aquarius go to be in the know, right here on the Good Morning America Aquatic Morning Show. <laughs> <laughs> I need a little sun to come up now. <laughs> yes, get that thing like they have on that CBS logo with the sun. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, you guys, we have got two guests with us this morning. We have got Mr. Joe from Joe Shrimp Shack, who is hey, on at Will Ness's place. For those hey. that don't know Will, he has many, 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 many animals. <laughs> okay. They just reptiles. Um, I have seen his anaconda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> that was off screen. Yeah. <laughs> That was hush hush. <laughs> Let me run through good mornings to everybody real quick. And then we're going to get to the animals and the vacation and the Mr. Will Nance. <laughs> Eduardo, good morning. Good to see you. Mystery Snow Guardians, Misfit Reptiles and Aquatics, ABC Aquatic Biotope Aqu Creations. I will get to that in a minute. Um, Liquid Zoo, good morning, Matt. Wait, guess who woke up two hours ago and if Lucky will be awake for not only the beginning of Tans, but maybe the entire show. Well, I hope so, Matt, but hey, I understand naps. Ed, Chattanooga, Ed, good morning. I hope morning. we're feeling much better. Fish on Taintix, good morning, good to see you. Miss Lori, good morning. Coffee cup sponsor she is. Along with Miss Dee Dee, who is right below in chat and also on screen. <laughs> there it is. That's right. Glass Box Hero. Yo, yo. It's time for the Aquatic Morning Show. That's right. Lurking and working. Stephen P. Good morning, Stephen. Greg. Good morning, Greg. We got a bunch of little wigglers, Greg. Bunch. Yay. Dennis Christensen. Brooklyn Bell. Let's see. Mystery Snow Guardians. No, I said her in the earlier. Oh, Planted Tanks. Good to see you. Good morning. Welcome. Kelly Foreman. Good morning, lady. Kelly. Joseph Stanley. Carrie. Good morning, Carrie. Yeah, I stole them this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what? Stole us. Oh. All right. Xanadu. I believe hey. I am caught up. Hey, Good morning, Xanadu. So, you guys. How much fun are you having, Joe? I'm having a lot of fun. Or a lot, a lot of fun. fun. A lot of fun. Well, it was a good friend of mine right down. I needed a vacation. I haven't taken a vacation in technically seven years. Um, so I decided to actually come down here. We've I already swam with the sharks. We've went, I, I've swam at the beach or at the ocean. Uh, and now we're just like working on this little zoo here, doing some little chores around here. Not little zoo. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it's not massive. It's not, it's going to get massive though. Well, Hopefully. for like a, like a private zoo, it's big, but for not, like, not, it's not as big as a zoo zoo, but you know, yeah, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's more than the average household can hold. <laughs> yes, but from what I've been told, Mr. Will can do those types of enclosures. Um, yes, what did you call them? To terrarium? Is it terrarium? Yeah, uh, you have three different types. You have terrariums, which is an enclosure without an animal, uh, which is just a planted item because it could be anything from a jar to a tank. Uh, okay. You have vivariums, which are an uh, enclosure for an animal uh, without water and then you have paludariums. Paludariums are usually half land, half water um, and you can again also put animals in those. Oh, that's what I want for my milk frogs. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. That would be very good for milk frogs. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> um, so, okay. Will. Yes. How did you get into this? Um... <laughs> So when, I mean, it's not every day you run into somebody that's got 
what you have. <laughs> no. Uh, so when I was six or seven, um, my sister, my older sister, uh, got her permit here in Florida to own venomous reptiles. Um, oh. And I remember walking into her bedroom and hearing a bunch of little baby rattlesnake tails going crazy, and I fell in love with them. So, oh. like right now, the room we're in has about, say, about thirty rattlesnakes in it. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so I kind of grew up with them in a way. My dad always liked uh, exotic hoofstock. My mom liked exotic birds. Um, so it kind of just flew with it. Uh, I got out of it for a couple of years. And then when I turned uh, 20, I started volunteering at a another wildlife park uh, and kind of got reconnected with it. I learned how to, it was for the Seminole tribe down here in South Florida. And I learned how to wrestle alligators, um, learned how to handle venomous snakes a little bit more again, um, just different aspects of it. And ever since then, that's pretty much all I've done. Wow. And so your intentions are to actually open, open it up to the yeah. public? Yeah, we, uh, we got our nonprofits. We are 100% a nonprofit. Um, and I'm hoping, which there's a lot of stuff to happen before then, but I'm hoping by the end of this year, uh, we will be able to do private tours uh, so people can come and either spend a whole day if they want, or if they want to do like a quick two hour tour or something like that, that's, that's originally our goal. And then uh, we also want to try and do like once a month, have like a nighttime thing where people can come and all the proceeds go to a certain conservation group. Um, okay. I mean, there's so many conservation groups that actually do really good things um, for the particular animals out in the wild. So we want to be able to, to, you know, once a month, raise a bunch of money for different groups and then, you know, donate all that money to them. Wow. Big, big dreams, big dreams. Trying, yeah. <laughs> That's goals. amazing. They're goals. Yeah, they're goals. goals. They're goals. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Goals. Goals are better than dreams. Yeah. yeah. But um, it's, it's a lot of work. It really is. Yeah. Like. I've only got, well, like 50 tons of fish tanks, and that's a lot. <laughs> so you've got, golly, I can't even count yesterday yeah. when he was going through. Yeah, we, um, can, we, can do a, we can do a tour whenever you want to. I can okay. Turn the so you've got a daughter named Miss Coral. Yep. What does she think of the snakes? Oh, she loves it. She has her own. She's got a little corn snake um, that... <laughs> was a rescue um she, she every time she comes in here with with daddy she always wants to take her snake out she named it corn snake she's got a little baby red foot tortoise that she's absolutely in love with um, she, she loves animals yeah i always thought a tortoise would be cool to just let go you know you see them get big and just walking around just make sure you have lots of roll of toilet paper on hand <laughs> <laughs> they're like rabbits so every time they jump they leave one yep. <laughs> they take a step they leave one a yep, turtle right. diaper right right you well, need yeah, one of catch things like they have on the back of the carriage horses <laughs> yeah that's right that's yeah. right that's right well yeah let's uh show us what you got let's make it big yeah we can start right let me turn the camera on and we'll we'll get in position all right now make you big screen <laughs> Big screen, Joe. There you go. Oh. Is it on me? It's on you right now. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so this is the first wall of uh, vivariums that I'm going to have here. Each one of these is going to have different animals. And most of them are going to be venomous snakes for this part. Um, I might do some mossy tree frogs in this one, but starting on him... Um, I have a bamboo tree viper. This is not his permanent cage. His cage is actually going to be getting redone because it was a kind of attempt and fail situation with something I was trying with his. Um, but initially, I'm going to have all of these cages done with snakes um, to where, you know, they look good. I'm going to have all this wood covered with universal rock so you can't even tell that it's a sand. So um, you you these are what are these exoterras or the zoomed or, or uh these are zoomed and exoterra so, um and so but everything inside of them you did you didn't buy like the kit no no i, I did, did I, i've been researching how to do this stuff for about three years mm -hmm. and i never really had time to start it and then COVID hit 
and I started doing it on COVID and everybody absolutely loved it. I started filming it and it's just literally been nonstop. Right. Since I, I have a, a business where I build these locally for people and I whole reason my room's not done is because I have so many jobs that people want me to build them cages. Like I have a, a four foot cage outside. I'm currently working on for a veiled chameleon. Um, you know, with, with each job comes a little bit of research on the animal. If I don't know right. it, I need to find out for certain things. So it, it, it is a lot of work. Right. Right. Well, Hey, it seems like a fun thing to do though. Yeah, it's fun. It's just very time consuming. <laughs> right. Right. Well, and job security. I mean, you know, yeah, that's, that's very true. Too. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean like Tanner, Tanner job. did this one, um, from Serpa design. He did this okay. one, which the snakes kind of destroyed it a little bit. He's going to be coming here in the next few weeks. Um, and he's going to probably be fixing it up a little bit. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I have a lot of stuff to do. Even just maintaining these, like this one's kind of overgrown quite a bit. I need to trim it up and take out well, a lot of dead leaves great. and stuff. But <laughs> it's great to me. Over, yeah, I don't see overgrown. I think it looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so that is an eyelash viper. Oh my goodness! Look at its head. Yeah, they have. If if you can see it, they have little eyelashes above their eyes. That's why they're called that. Aww. Another one over there, another one on the misting system up there. You can kind of see his. Oh, oh, he's a different color. Yeah, he's green, or she is. They, these three are all females. Okay, so. that gold is pretty. Yeah, I love the yellow ones. Mm -hmm. the but yeah, um, I mean, and then oh, coming over here, I have my big paludarium, um, which I have another temple viper in here, but I'm going to have this i'm going to probably keep this one here um and then next to it i'm possibly going to do a big six foot fish tank um don't know what i'm going to technically put into it yet but um i definitely want to have a fish tank with some cool fish in here um and everything in this building is temporary until i get a new steel building built um because i'm going to need more room eventually but yeah. This is custom aquariums yeah this is custom aquariums. <clears throat> this is custom aquariums. so if everybody watched me on my live on thursday yeah. Mark gave some stuff away. Um, Steven wants to know, how do you trim the overgrowth of the plants with the venomous snakes inside? Oh, I pull them out. Okay. Yeah, I pull them out. They go in a separate container for the time being. I'll go ahead and start trimming stuff up. Um, and then when, you know, when I'm done, I just put them back in. Okay. And then I have my little temporary baby crocodilian 55 oh, gallon. Hi. There he is. You That's had my friend. You, de you definitely right. have to have a special license for them, right? Yes. Yeah. So this is a this is a baby more or less crocodile. You don't bite. No, she's pretty calm. Um, I actually got her as a gift um, from a buddy in Texas. Oh wow! Yeah. So. That's cool. She came all the way from Mexico, and then I also have some baby Snyder's Caymans in here as well. Oh, wow. Look at the colors. Yeah. Um, so, God, I wish they stayed that small. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> They're so cute. <laughs> so you'll have a, you got a place for them built or you're building it for as they get bigger? Yeah, when we go outside, I'll I can okay. show you guys that. But um, like I said, it's it's a lot of work. Yeah just to build the zoo in itself and a lot of money. Um, so most of the building I do do myself. Um, you know, my wife helps us, helps me out a lot with a lot of the paperwork and right. all that fun stuff. But the majority of the building I'll do myself. Um, it's like right now I just took down 11 trees uh, that were kind of in the way for the six foot fence that we need for USDA uh -huh. um, and the crocodile building and new snake building. Um, so like that's kind of the current project is getting rid of all the trees. trees. Yeah, yeah. So um, which we are that? going to be planting more trees. Which you know, again, we'll see that outside. Um, yeah, I started getting some really cool exotic trees, um, like the. Oh the, sweet! I always say this wrong. Bow 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 trees from Madagascar and Africa. Um, oh. I got a bunch of those, so I'm pretty excited. Even though they get massive. Sounds but, interesting. Uh, so this room, this room's going to be all. Vivariums, terrariums, paludariums, um, when I'm done with it. Um, cool. And a fish tank and paludarium. So 
the big ones. <laughs> but I got snakes from literally all over the world, even all these snakes and totes. These are all going to be getting cages that I have to still build um, here in the next couple of months. So how are they all venomous? Yes. Everything in here, um, except for the crested gecko. Well, for all you fish people, there are some fish here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the red tail's right there. It's swimming in the corner. There is red tail. Oh, the glare, we can't see him. Yes, it does. Standing glare. Oh, turn it more. There you go. Uh, Stephen P. had house. asked earlier, why the venomous snakes? Is um, there a reason just why you Because to like me, those? they're a lot... They're prettier. Um, I mean, you can't get non-venomous snakes that look like half of these snakes. Um, and the fact that almost anybody can own any non-venomous snake, but, you know, you have to have a special license to own these, so not everybody can own them. I mean, just these two uh, baby snakes I have right here, they're some of the rarest tree vipers in the country. Um, this was actually a donation to us. Uh, they're literally called beautiful pit vipers. Um, <laughs> They're babies right now, but they, uh, they're they probably about two grand for this pair alone. Um, oh, and this wow. was actually, somebody donated these to our, our zoo uh, so we could have them on display. The other one's on the water bowl there. Awesome. And if you get bit, what's your way to go to get treatment? Um, I have the personal phone number for almost everybody that uh, has anti-venom, uh, some of the guys that make the most anti-venom here in the country. So I basically go to the hospital, summer knows we have like a whole rundown thing that we do. You have a, you have a book of it. Yeah, the book of it. Um, basically if I get bit, I go to the book, I pull out the anti-venom card for the snake I got bit by and we go to the closest hospital. Um, wow. It's a whole process that you have yeah. to have with our licensing. So. And Summer okay. also, my wife knows all that stuff. So she knows what happens, or she knows what to do if, if something were to right. happen. Hmm. Okay. So how many snakes do you have in that room? In this room? A lot. <laughs> do you have, know how many total you have in total then? In total, about 180. Wow. In this room, probably about 40 or so. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> and this room is pretty much the rest of them with the exception of the stuff that's in quarantine. Okay. Is it, what do we oh hear? God. You hear that's rattles. the rattle. So that's uh oh, that's God. your famous which she's in sheds, so that's why she's rattling. That's your uh famous western diamondback rattlesnake um, <laughs> that you see in all the old western movies and stuff uh -huh. like that. Oh, see, that, when I hear that sound, that triggers me to reach for the bush axe. <laughs> see, there you go. Uh, I was fixing the run. That yeah, looks like a cobra. a cobra of some kind. Yeah. Is that what it is? What? Yeah, that's a, that's an albino monocle cobra. Okay. Wow. Looks like it, too. Yeah, it looks like it's got the thing, the cape. Is that what it called, a cape? Yeah, the hood. Hood, the hood. That's it. It stares at me like it wants to eat me. It probably does. It does. But we it also does have vacation. We also have Blue. Um, he was a, pretty. an owner surrender. He's a black and white Argentine Tegu. Um, he's a sweetheart. He normally, unless I'm doing work in here, he normally just walks around the room. But he, he's a big oh. lizard. He's yeah, pretty. So he doesn't like That's, live yeah. in his cage. I like lizards. Yeah, yeah we like lizards. <laughs> I got. I mean. <laughs> I got green mambas. I got, like I said, lots of rattlesnakes. You got your timber and canebrake rattlesnakes down there on the bottom. Oh my gosh, those are big. Ooh, Ooh she's looking for a way out. <laughs> yes, it's like, oh my God, I'm getting creepy. <laughs> so, and these oh, are so Egyptian cobras. These guys are complete psychopaths, <laughs> literally. They're the most schizophrenic cobra I've ever owned. Really? Oh my God! Yeah, oh. she's she's almost killed me twice already. Oh no! Yeah. Now, have you been bitten? Uh, not by a venomous snake, no. Okay. Wow. You have special um, 
like leather up to your armpit gloves and stuff like that? Um, I do have, uh, there's a glove that a couple companies make. Um, I don't usually wear them. Um, <laughs> I'll use them if I have to do like a medical procedure or if a vet has to come here and do a medical procedure. Um, I'll use them, but other than that, I usually don't. Someone's got horns. Mm hmm. So that's a rhino viper from Africa. Rhino. Yeah. Got pretty markings, though. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful. Got puff adder there. Puff adder. Uh, you probably can't see that one. It's a little yeah, bit but bear. Yeah. But. Tons and, and you tons. have to have that sticker on every window that said that it's a venomous snake, a dangerous yeah. venomous reptile. I got to have danger venomous reptile. I got to have uh, their common name Ooh. and scientific name. Okay. Here's a big one for you. You ready? Oh, oh my God. God. That's usually everybody's favorite. That looks like two snakes, though. It looks like one snake on top of another. The way it, it is that colored yeah, yeah. So those like are that green. Vipers. they're related to the that's a gaboon viper a kaboom kaboom yeah kaboom with a g kaboom. yeah kaboom. i like the green that's pretty that definitely some unusual markings on that one it's hard to tell that it's the head right there i yeah, know yeah. now does it have i think it's a leaf yeah does it have a hook thingy on its nose too yeah it's related to the other snake that you had that you saw with the horns oh, okay okay We're both huh. from africa Ooh. that does look like one snake on top of another <laughs> but i do have she wasn't kidding about the anaconda i do have an anaconda oh hey, jokes of stanley <laughs> Uh, I do have a couple of non-venomous snakes. Uh, this has always been one of my personal favorites. I love anacondas. Yeah. This is always like a childhood dream to own one. Um, oh. I have ball pythons and stuff too. Right. And how big can that one get? Both both these racks are full of more snakes. So that's a ball python. So these are the snakes I'll let people hold when they come here. Okay. So, wow. These are the first snake I held was a... Uh, um, Orlando this year when I did the interview with um, shoot what are the people that bring the um, owl oh that was Lewis yeah yeah him they put the snake on me while we did the interview that's the first time I've ever held a snake yeah no, is that Lewis. the one that had blue in their name blue that's blue dog aquatics blue dog aquatics he wasn't there he wasn't in Orlando this year um shoot he normally I brings them remember it was probably a big red tail boa or something. Yeah, I think it was the big. one that went on Brett Raymer in the previous know. show in Dallas. Did I put it on him in Dallas? No, no, oh. someone else did. The other guy that brings the owls and everything else. No, Lewis wasn't in Dallas. Lewis? Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I don't know what it was. Unless it was a berm. I know the laws are different, so. I don't, I don't know. We can go outside, though, and see stuff. Let's outside. go check outside. All these snakes are looking at me like I'm breakfast, so. Which one is your favorite, Joe? Mine? Yeah, which, which snake is your favorite? Anyone that doesn't bite me. <laughs> <laughs> what about the ones that will squeeze you? Oh, that's fine, too. He brought one in yesterday. It was a California California King. California King. It was super cool. It was like a, black, it was like a chocolate and white. Yeah. Oh, wow. Super cool. Well, it was a new rescue, so it's in quarantine. Uh, Carrie would like to know, do snakes' personalities change the more you handle them, or do they always try to bite you? No, 100% they will change. Um, I'm quite known in the venomous community for what I do with rattlesnakes. I've taken some of the nastiest rattlesnakes and tamed them down to where I can put them around my neck. Oh, so oh my they will 100% change the more you handle them. As long as you're handling them in a very comfortable manner for them, um, and, it, you know, obviously you have to be safe with these snakes, but even with non-venomous, the more you handle them, um, the calmer and more respectful they'll be of you as the handler, too. And they know the difference between people as well. So if I were to go in there and handle a snake a certain way and then Joe were to go in there and not know what he's really doing, 
um, they would know the difference and they would act more aggressive towards Joe than they would me. Oh, wow. Hence, hence why they'd eat me. Yeah. <laughs> Is that by the scent? Like you smell different or how do um, they know the difference? Just kind of, just kind of the energy that you're putting off. Um, okay. That makes you sense. Know, the different way you're touching them, uh, the, the different placements of grabbing them. It, it could be a numerous amount of things. Yeah. Oh, we have a $2 super sticker from Super Sticker, Super Sticker Aquatics. So if you're not awake, hold on. Because here for we sticker go. Dance. For Sticker Dance. For sticker Dance. That's right. That party don't stop. Thank you so much, Garcia. Thank so, you so much. Right now we're in Oreo's cage. Oreo is our little skunk here. <gasps> I have always wanted a skunk. He was in he was in Orlando. I didn't get to see him. Aww. Oh yeah. We brought him to Orlando. Um so right now he's in a little temporary cage until I get his uh main enclosure built. You wanna come out and say hi? So skunks are nocturnal, so he pretty much just yeah. sleeps all day. Yeah. Now is he de-skunked? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, how oh. cute is that? <laughs> it's I almost want to go, hey kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> god, so he's always, so cute. I was actually just contacted uh yesterday to take in another much older skunk, about an eight year skunk. Watch your head. Um, oh wow! Yeah, so we might be getting another one here in the next next week or so. Um, just some guy that's having health issues and can't really take care of some of his animals anymore, so he's looking for new homes for them. Yeah. Um, here we have our main fox enclosure. Uh, this enclosure is thirty foot wide by fifteen foot deep by oh. eight foot or ten foot tall. Look so, at him. That is, who is that? Oh, that's Swiper. That's Loki up there. Swiper. <laughs> Dixie. Paw Patrol. I don't right. know where Dixie is. Yeah, where's Dixie? She's probably in one of the houses. So um, this was, I always told my wife when we moved and bought her, actually bought a house, uh, we would, I would build her her dream fox enclosure, and this is pretty much it. So. Oh, yeah. now y'all go in there and like play with them like dogs? Yeah, she does. I don't. Does. Um, I'm the bad guy that has to catch them up when they have to go to the bed or get checked out. <laughs> uh, so, or I'm the one always working, making all the noise. So they don't. They're not necessarily fond of me too much. Yeah. Um, she she'll go in there. She'll rub their bellies and pet them and give them kisses now, and all that fun stuff. But not not me. Now, how did you come across them? Um. So I rescued the female first, uh, which she's hiding from us right now she's very very skittish um she was or her mother was a rescue from a fur farm um oh and then yeah there's there's lots of those that's a whole nother episode oh. <laughs> um so her mother was a rescue he got the mom and then didn't know she was pregnant he brought her oh. home and two weeks later she popped out <laughs> seven or six or seven baby foxes. Wow. Uh, so he obviously couldn't take care of all of them. So he was trying to rehome some of them. And we took in Dixie, which is the silver fox. Oh. Again, where the heck she's at. Um, and then I brought her home. I built her a big enclosure. And then literally two weeks after we brought her home, um, my local officer for our fishing game mm -hmm. called me. He's like, hey, since you have that nice new fox enclosure, would you like another fox? He's super nice. He's a sweetheart which was Swiper, which is the one that was just here a minute ago. Uh -huh. um, and I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. And then we ended up moving again after we got him. Um, and they went to another buddy's zoo for a little while until I got their enclosure built at the new house. And then while we were, or right after we finally got him back at the house, we thought Dixie was too young to breed. But turns out we didn't get Swiper fixed fast enough. Um, <laughs> And we had Loki, which Loki's the one that's sleeping up there on the pirate's lookout right now. Okay. Yeah. And then right after, you only have actually one? right right before Loki was actually born, Swiper was fixed so that we can't breed him anymore. 
Okay. Um, and then we actually have, after we moved in here, we took in another seven boxes. Wow. Um, that was a huge rescue project that we did um, with some people over in Fort Myers that they were keeping them in very bad conditions. Exposures, conditions. Yeah. Like it, it was just all around bad. Uh, so we took in seven. Uh, we rehomed a bunch of them. We only have three left of those guys, which um, next Tuesday, actually, um, I will be introducing the female first into with, with these guys here to see how she does um, before then going ahead and introducing the males as well. Um, okay. Their, their quarantine will be over. I have to take the female to get a booster shot. because she They've also never seen a vet, these seven oh. boxes. So the ones that all left, um, two of them went to another nonprofit. Two of them went to um, another zoo down in Homestead. Um, but now, we so this to see vets and stuff all beforehand. So, so you had to take them long to long. the vet or the vet comes out there? Uh, the, the foxes I can bring to a vet. Uh, we have a vet uh, that's about an hour south of us that we trust with our foxes. So they always, anytime something comes up, we just bring our foxes to them. They've always, do they make you muzzle them? Uh, no, what they'll do, uh, what they did for the new ones, not ours, because ours are, are pretty tame. Yeah. Uh, the new ones, because we really didn't know them too much, they actually would just put them under a little bit. Okay. So they work with them, do what they need yeah. to do um, before, and then they would wake them back up. Um, okay. Ours, they could just go in, they get their shots or whatever, and then that's it. Yeah. But okay. The newer ones, just because we didn't know them, they got they got put to sleep for a little bit. There you go. Just a little bit of relaxation. Yeah. How did Loki get on that platform? Is there a ladder, or can they jump that? Oh, uh, there's a. I have a. <laughs> Oh, okay. They go up here, and then there's a big platform here, and then it shoots across this way to that platform. Cool. Another shelf that goes all the way around to the front of the cage. Yeah. They love to climb. Absolutely like love to climb. So, and then I have this side. It's like their big enrichment side, and over here is like for their sleeping and other things. So, <laughs> there's Dixie. There's Dixie. The silver? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go back over there. <laughs> She'll run back over here. Oh, up top. Okay. I caught a silver Ooh. fox one time. You did? It was it was on the side of the road, just standing out. This is like eleven o'clock at night, uh -huh. and just stood there. So I stopped my truck. I had a, a 1967 International pickup. Stopped the truck, went over there. I grabbed a little blanket and bent over and picked this fox up right in my face and mm. set it on the front seat beside me, and I took it home. And um, we kept it in the backyard for two, three days. And then, you know, we'd feed it, water it. And pretty soon it just, because we had woods, uh -huh. eventually it just went back into the woods. I don't know why it didn't get eat up. I thought, I thought that's how you're telling me how you met your husband. <laughs> well, you know, hey, I don't mind. I don't mind wrangling. <laughs> Tried to tell you all that stuff. So, Tortoises. I can tell you the beast. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I love the tortoises. So the little one there, that's, that's the one my daughter loves. She calls her baby tortoise. You don't have an albino one yet, huh? No, no, no. So these are these are both also owner surrenders. Um, okay. People that had them couldn't take care of them properly, so they, yeah. they get to us. Um, which the one, the big one there, uh, that's called a, a sulcata or African spur thigh. Um, they're the most rescued or rehomed animal in the country. Oh, my um, goodness. People, you know, you can buy them in a pet store for $25. People don't realize that they are the third largest tortoise in the world. They get to yeah. about this size. They start destroying your house or your property, and then people don't want them anymore. And they also dig. So Yeah, there's a big dig spot over there. Yeah, but that, uh, that's nothing. <laughs> so, I mean, so they, you have yeah. to kind of underlay for those kinds to keep them in. <laughs> yeah, they, they get huge. Um, and so what I was saying about the trees, all the trees I took down are all right here. You can see all the trunks there. Um, it's just been a huge process. Right now, currently, I'm holding all my crocodilians in this temporary thing I built for them. Um, they can so crawl I, in and out of those tubs? No, no, they stay in there. Uh, the oh, they're in them. The crocodilians have like a land portion. The turtles don't. Oh, okay. Okay. That, that, some of these turtles don't ever really come out of the water. Ever. Right. Um, but 
behind this, I'm going to knock this down behind it. I'm going to put a big long building for all the crocodilians to have natural enclosures. I want to be able to have glass on the front. So if they're underwater, people can see them underwater. Yeah. And uh, where that shed is right there, that's going to come down in a big uh, 40 by 50 foot building. I'm going to get put up for all the snakes um, to go there. Wow. Uh, all around those trees over there is going to be the tortoise enclosure. So it, it's literally a lot of work right here in the front of the fox cage. I'm going to have a big enclosure for uh, my monitor lizard. Uh, the skunk enclosure is going in that back corner over there. So it, it's literally a lot of work. And I built, yeah. I built all the cages myself. So right. it's literally just nonstop. Non Always something to do. Yeah. When's, when's your day off? <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? Oh. Wow. You got to, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, and then but, the, quarantine, the quarantine foxes are over there in those two temporary things. And then, like I said, Tuesday, I'm going to be introducing the female. Um, and then about a week after probably the males into there, the males, are the ones that I have to be careful with just because there's going to be a hierarchy uh, thing so yeah they got a peck in order yeah pretty much yeah. right now swiper is the, the the head male in there but um i have a feeling that once we introduce these other two males uh that there, there might be a new one so i gotta yeah. sit down in there and which i'm filming i'm filming the female for an episode for youtube uh but the males just because i know they're gonna fight and there's probably gonna be some some wounds from this fight i'm not yeah. gonna film that one um right. but it's got to happen in order yeah. for them to introduce. So that's right. That's so the right. question, the question I had, Will, when I came down here is, what do your neighbors think about this? <laughs> well, our one neighbor, no, our one neighbor is actually really cool. Um, they're uh, they're from Miami originally, but they they absolutely love it. Uh, they've donated to uh, to the nonprofit already too. They helped us pay for a lot of the trees to get cut down. Really? Um, they're, they're they're super awesome. Like the nicest people ever. I couldn't have asked for for better neighbors. Uh, we'll oh. get you the information so you can put in the comments about the uh, the nonprofit and everything. Yes, definitely. And that is a really cool tattoo of that lion. <laughs> uh, I, have, I have all the all the predatory animals I work with. I have a hyena here, a bear there, a tiger there. I used to work with big cats and hyenas and stuff. So. So are you gonna get any of those? Um, not yet. As of right now, we're going to stay relatively small. Um, there's a giant forest right there yeah. just yep. past that shed. Uh, that is five acres. I'm hoping in the next, you know, two years or so, if the nonprofit's doing really well, we can buy that five acres uh, with the nonprofit. Yeah. If we can, then I can get all the big cats and stuff like that. I have my permits for them. I have my hours with them. Um, I just don't have enough land to legally own them. You have yeah. to have a minimum of five acres. So we're going to call uh, them Will Exotic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. You laugh at that, but I actually used to uh, used to work and talk to a lot of those guys in that show. So it's kind of weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, Did he it's, get it's out of jail? Or no, is he's still in jail. jail. He's no, still he's in prison. Still in he's still, yeah, he's still there. Okay. But it's a, it's a lot of work. It's a, it's definitely a dream come true. I've worked at so many different facilities. I've I've gone to a facility, learned what I can, and left on good terms to then go learn more. Yeah. Um, I'm tired of working for people because you don't have control of that animal's life. So you could work with an animal for a solid two years, and then the next day the owner could be like, all right, well, I'm selling that animal to another zoo, or it's getting transferred somewhere else, or whatever the case is, and I got really tired of that. Yeah. Uh, that's what happened with me and the hyena that I worked with dearly. It was literally, that was a dream come true. And then the next thing I know, she was gone. Um, so I got tired of that. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to open my own place so that I control the animals. I can work with them as much as I want. Everything that we pretty much get here is, is going to be its forever home. So uh -huh. um, it, it, it's, yeah. it's a lot of work. And he's right. got a lot of people. He's got Chance, which is like 40 seconds down the road. Chance Kramer. Yeah, he lives two houses down. <laughs> kind of he's an aquascaper. We yeah. have the Island Boys. They live in the next island town. Island the next boys. Town. I just had to bring that up. Of course. <laughs> <you did. laughs> um, okay, so Stephen, back in that subject, uh, says, "Does Will have his own Carol Baskin-like rival?" <laughs> no, no, I don't. Uh, like I said, I, I have a lot of, I've, 
a lot of friends that I've worked are for and like left on good terms and I am friends with them now. So uh, Carol Baskin, thank God she's like four hours from me. So I don't have to worry about that. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and you I, don't I have don't big have cats, cats right yet, now so. either. So she wouldn't be, or you wouldn't be on her radar. <laughs> yeah, no. Not yet. Not yet at least. Yeah. <laughs> Should we go see the duck and everything? Um, oh, ducky, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we get some other animals here, too. Uh, Victoria Lee creates Welcome to the Morning Show, and we are glad you're here. And we are very glad that your yellow rock um, Carbenzas just had babies. Congratulations. Yeah, her, her very first time. <laughs> All right, we got a bunny right here. A bunny. We got Snickers. He was found in the have, middle of a. He was found in the middle of a highway. I have a bunny named Snickers. What are you doing? Hey, bunny. Mine was black um, and white. I would he love was, to have bunny rabbits. Mm -hmm. He was. He was literally found in the middle of a major highway. Oh my. Yeah. Oh. So a buddy of mine grabbed him and then called us the next morning and was like, "Hey, I just found this rabbit in the middle of." Uh -huh. University at three o'clock in the morning. You guys want him? He he thought it was a puppy, so he chased after it. Turns out it's a rabbit. So majority of your animals are rescues, though. Yes. Yes. Even a lot of the snakes too. Now, does the bunny stay outside winter time too? Yeah. Yeah. They they they're made for that kind of weather. Hey, it's Florida. What winter? Yeah. <laughs> but it does get cold sometimes. <laughs> it, it got down to 50 degrees and they were complaining. I'm like, dude, this is like summer for me. Because um, Mike, Mike Florida Fish Rescue lost his yeah. fish because of the cold. Yep. Yep. Uh, Fish Ranch House. Prayers for mom. She's getting surgery. Yes. Very yeah, prayers. Right. Prayers, Thelma. Oh, there's Ducky. 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 Come here. Ducky, come oh, here. It's such a pretty place. Yes, it is. So the duck loves chasing the dogs around. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mike's Aquatics and Things. Good morning. Melvin's Reef. I did see your uh, message. We'll talk about that later. What are you doing? Ducky! Where are you going? Mike, you missed the snakes. Yep. You can rewatch. Yeah, right. the snakes. So I actually do have this giant pond on property, too. Oh, um, good. After I get the majority of the zoo built, I'm going to focus on this and try and get it cleared up. There's actually already two arowanas in there. Oh, wow. I put three. So everything that I had originally in, wow. in the uh, big paludarium, once it got too big, I put it in here. Uh, <laughs> eventually, the, eventually, the red-tailed catfish will go in here, too. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to have a couple different filtration systems on it to try and clear it up. I'm going to eventually one day try and drain a lot of it out with a garbage pump to get the muck um, out uh -huh. of the bottom. Um, yeah. Eventually try to make it a nice, clean pond. Okay. Keyword there, eventually try. Right, right. So we got chickens. No. Will those air, uh, air wanders try to bite the feet off the ducks? No. no. I've never had an issue with them. Um, I only ever see them at night if I come out here with a flashlight. During the day, I never even see them. Um, we do have a couple of predatory birds that come around too, but I haven't seen them catch them. The only issue that with a predator that I've seen here that kind of worries me about the fish is otters. We do have otters out here. Um, so I don't know if they've caught them, but again, the last time I saw the arowana was about a month ago. Um, I haven't really been out here at night since then. I love otters. I also too. haven't seen the otters in a while. And I know the peacock bass are too fast for the otters to catch. So Otters are cute. Otters are, they, are so cute. <laughs> yeah, are they wild or... Yeah, no, they're they're wild. They're wild, okay. Um, the nano aquarium guy says, "I'm guessing that summers are what they worry about when it gets too hot." <laughs> We're talking about the bunnies. Yeah, yeah. the bunnies. Um, I have to go inside. Daddy duty calls. All right, I'll be okay. right back. All right. Tell Coral so, yeah. said hi. So, Good morning. Joe, Joe's going to collect eggs while we wait. There we go. Yeah, little chickens here. Little chicks. Hey, chicky, chicky. That's what you need, Joe. You need to have you a little farm. 
Uh, well, I used to I used to breed horses, so of course we had chickens well, there, we had dogs, we had cats, we had all that stuff. I mean, yeah, I'd love to have this. I mean, where else can you go? I go to my friend's house. True. I can wake up, have coffee with Fox. I can yep. just kind of chill. He can go over and say, "Hey, do you want to go swim with the sharks today?" And I go swim with the sharks. Um, <laughs> what are y'all gonna do today? Whew, what was that? What are y'all gonna do today? Um, there is a animal safari place like eight miles from here. Okay. That you can actually drive your vehicle in and then kind of go see all the animals. I think we might go do that. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. But like what other kind of animals does it have other than what? They have everything, I guess. Okay. Like giraffes like, and elephants and. I think so. I mean, I've seen like on the, on the thing, it showed like a lion on the, on the ad and stuff. Uh-huh. So. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. That's right. And then of course we get the little pool for the kids. Oh. Put the old fence on there. Yeah. So this Y'all is all have like, to do that down in Little Florida. They have to do that, don't they? Yeah, we yeah we went um, so we, we, sharks, so we have all our, we have all our wetsuits all hanging up from. So a lot of times people say we did not go in a cage. We went free swimming with the sharks. Yeah. So that was like super unique. Let me turn this chair around. That was like super unique. Um, it was like eight to ten foot waves when we got out there. Yeah, we all got seasick. We got some video of us getting seasick, so it is what it is. But I had fun. There was a, a bull shark, and there's some lemon sharks. Um, when you were swimming in the ocean, um, and you're, you know, when the waves are coming in and you're jumping, I yep. did the same thing when I went down there um, last year, and we went down there to see Mike, and he took us to the ocean. We had big swells like that because there was a storm coming in, yep. and so they were just getting bigger and bigger. Well, I got almost pulled out from the undertow. Mike had to grab me because I couldn't touch anymore, and I couldn't swim back in. It was, I got scared. Yeah, Will said, Will said there's no undertow. Um, when you see me swimming with him, it's, it was, he was trying to teach me how to surf with, the, with your body on the waves. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. You can go out where it's all the way up to my neck, and then the wave will come. I start swimming with it, and all of a sudden, I'm down to my knees. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know, 20, 30 feet. Would, but it was... It was Fun. it was amazing. Like I've never I've never swam in the ocean before. I mean, when I came down here, what two months ago, I only got my feet wet. We went to right. a different beach. This was Juno Beach that we went to. Yeah. Um, I thought it'd be fun. You know, uh, Jersey was down here. Uh, Jersey had fun. Uh, Jersey, we did not take Jersey out to uh, uh, swim with the sharks. Do the fact of there's eight foot waves. I mean, guaranteed. Yeah. If I got sick, everybody else is gonna sick. We took Dramamine too. Um, and that, that didn't help at all. Uh, now, did y'all take Dramamine because you're not used to it? Or is that what they suggest even if well, you're even used well, to Well, even it? Will took Dramamine from motion sickness. Right. I mean, it's more, it's like, I went on Mille Lacs Lake up in Minnesota, and we've had five to six foot waves up there. Uh-huh. But that's that's that. Uh, when we got out and we were in the Bay, well, I don't know what it's called, the Bay Area, whatever, it was kind of calm. And then we got to the ocean, and it was a little bit waves. And then we got to the uh, the Gulf Stream. Um, and just the water, it just warmed up and instantly warmed up. Cause it was like 50 degrees when we, when we went yesterday, but then all of a sudden the waves got huge. First it was five foot, then it was six foot. Um, yeah. it got to a point where we also, there were 10 foot waves. Um, and we got this little, all we had is a little 16 foot boat. Oh, um, went out. That's all it was. It's a lot of people are doing these shark things in just small little 16 foot boats, like a little fishing boat. Oh um, my gosh. We went out, and as soon as we stopped, that's when the motion sickness set in. That was the the waves going up and down and up and down, and um, uh, so I, that's why we took the ground feet and everything else. You flip the camera around. I'm gonna flip the camera around. I was I thought we we're gonna do a tour. I can flip the camera around. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna flip the camera around. She's yelling at me and everything else like that. Okay, we'll be looking at. Now we're gonna turn the camera around. Oh, okay. All right. Let's do this. Oh, earthquake. <laughs> so it. I had a blast. I was talking about the shark tank. Yeah. in the ocean, and it was, it was unusual because the waves were that high. But I want to go. I want. Oh, I loved it. Absolutely loved oh, it. Originally, it was supposed to be four foot waves every seven seconds or so, which really is like bad, but not too too bad. 
By the time we got about three miles off coast, um, it was about 17 foot waves every five seconds. So he was 17 foot. Yeah. Got back really quick. Um, we were going out there. Originally, the trip, um, I was trying to get them on, got canceled because of the, the weather. But then uh, my buddy who runs the shark stuff was like, hey, he's like, we're going out tomorrow morning um, for some filming. Do you, do you guys want to come? And I was like, yeah. I was like, they, they'll, so they'll try it. Yeah. So, which it, it takes a lot for me to get sick and call it a rough trip. This was a rough trip. Um, Ooh. I got seasick. Um, and you're used to being on the ocean in boats and waves and stuff, right? Yeah. So it was okay. It was just it was a rough trip. So at yeah. one point I got at one point I got sick, but I hopped back in. So we weren't in cages. The sharks were like literally like arm lengths away, swimming back and forth. Will's job was the kind of like the bait box person where he was down underneath the water. We're just snorkeling. There's no there's no dive gear, uh, and he was bringing them up. So. Keep in mind these big waves. So I'm hanging on to the bait box rope. So I'm just getting pulled behind the boat as it's drifting, which was kind of cool. It's kind of like I was like being a submarine and everything. Um, <laughs> but when I was looking for it, I was completely fine. And then, but when I looked, when I'm looking back, they told me to start pivoting my head more. Then I would start getting seasick. So, <laughs> but they were literally like, no lie. These sharks were like, I had one like, fingertip i was i was singing so i mean you were in the water for what maybe like 30 minutes something like that i was in for a whole two hours and after <laughs> the two hours i was like i can't do this anymore yeah <laughs> i was i was in the water and i started singing tequila um <laughs> and then i got out and i got sick and then i jumped back in then i sang uh baby shark i sang uh the batman theme song jaws. And, and i sang the jaws one when i saw the sharks it was like super cool um and then I saw Will get out, and as soon as I saw Will um, um, call to the dinosaurs, I saw him do that, and I instantly called to the dinosaurs, too. And then by then, we all, we all decided to call it. Hi, Miss Coral. Good morning. Coral. What are you being shy for? <laughs> but no, we'll now, make sure you guys... Coral's the little game. girl that had the birthday at that one of the events. Yes, yes yeah. at Dallas. Dallas. Or, or, uh, Dallas. Dallas. Yes. Her, her birthday is on Halloween. Okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that is your birthday. So we'll make sure you guys get the information for Will's nonprofit too. Yeah. Um, even because he does the guy that does the boat with the sharks, he does that for public too, right? Shark addicts. Yeah. 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 Shark Shark addicts is the other one for the swimming with the sharks. If anybody's, if anybody's down here, they can contact them. It's more of like a summer. It's a seasonal thing. So normally it's just during yeah. the summer. Um. We just he he was helping us out by taking taking us out and then also had to do. And you stuff. say uh, Nash, was it National Geographic that y'all were uh, out there with the, or the, the the one guy that was getting filmed? He films for like Net Geo. He films for Discovery Channel. He he does, he's a famous videographer. Now is um, he the one that comes to the Aquashellas? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Um, he uh, he's a buddy that lives. Yes, baby. Yeah, I'll come inside in a second. Um, <laughs> he uh, he lives in North Carolina. He does a lot of different traveling. Like he's going to to um, Alaska all summer long to do a lot of boat stuff up there. Oh, um, wow! But then uh, there's another guy that does a lot of filming too. He does documentaries and stuff that we met uh, yesterday on the boat. Uh, who lives up here by me, and he wants to come over and do some filming too. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Definitely. Well, that's pretty good for not for never swimming in the ocean. I swam in the ocean one day, and I swam with the sharks the next day. And with that's... a critically endangered species, might I add. And with the critically endangered <laughs> one. No, there was uh, sandbars. Oh, the sand sandbar shark. Sandbar yeah. shark. Yeah. So I, I've been diving with sharks for professionally for about five years now, and and um, I have never seen sandbar sharks in the numbers that we saw yesterday, and how they were acting um they were acting like lemon sharks which they don't care about personal space so it was pretty cool to see them in that aspect and then shortly after i had to get out of the water <laughs> right okay he so saw me and he said, look at that big giant twinkie yeah this is an image for people that don't know what sandbar sharks look like this is a sandbar shark they look like um yeah. yes baby so and and the thing is it's like I, we we brought cameras to get footage, so I got footage of us leaving the port. But as soon as you know, he hit 
those big waves. I put okay. the cameras away. I didn't want to drop any in the in the in the in the ocean. So right now, <laughs> these sharks are they the are they same. not aggressive? Apparently, but y'all were chumming them too. So they us a shot. Yeah, um, I don't even think that's a sandbar. He doesn't do the sandbar test. Okay, hang on. You can't always tell with Google. Yeah. Uh, right. Um, look for one that's a little lighter in color. Like this, I can't. It's so small. I can't see. Oh, yeah, that far right. Oh. Oh, um, yeah, that looks like a sand. Yeah, that's a sandbar. Okay. It actually looks like my buddy's picture. <laughs> one of my friends. It says Fine Art America. Is who did the the photo oh maybe not then um yeah, yeah sandbar, they're, they're they're critically endangered they're awesome species usually when we see them we only see like one or two at a time and they're skittish because there's usually a lot of bull sharks around uh -huh. um, in this case i mean there was a good port point where there was about 15 of them around and they actually pushed the bull sharks out and there was oh. there were originally three bull sharks and then there was one so, and she was even staying back quite a bit, which was incredible. I've never seen anything like that in wow. the five years I've been doing this. So I thought it was really neat. Yeah. Well, yeah they're, they're more, they're more uh, strength in numbers type shark. Yeah. Um, the sandbars, no, they're pushing like seven, eight feet long. Seven, eight feet. The bull shark, we had one bull shark there. She was probably pushing about 11 or 12 feet. That one right there? And then the, the other ones were slightly smaller than her. You want to watch Buzz and Woody? So, but no, we had we had a lot of fun. It was it was a unique experience. Um, would I come down here a different time when the ocean is calm? Yeah, most definitely. Um, I'll love to get more videography done with it. No, that's a whole. Thing. It's that high back. Um, but the, the big waves didn't scare me that much. I mean, we called the dinosaurs. We called the dinosaurs. It is what it is. Is that what right. we're calling? Called it up, calling it up. So the the captain actually videotaped Will and I calling the dinosaurs. Oh, and fun! Sent it to Will's <laughs> wife. Um, uh oh. So that's what she saw. Like she's like, hey, she hey, woke guys. up. She woke up to it. She woke up to it of of us calling the dinosaurs, and then don't as soon as we got back, touch. it was like, hey, are you guys okay? <laughs> uh, oh, Whips yeah. World said sandbar sharks have a snaggle tooth oh, grin. Wow. Primarily fish eaters, right? Yeah, that is very true. We were chumming them. That just, I don't Benita. understand you're chumming them to bring them up, which is food, yes. and then your food swimming in the ocean with them. How do but they know bigger. the difference? I don't know. The scent, I would think. I would think because when you're chumming them, you're cutting the, the fish. fish up, and it's releasing the oils and, and the blood uh -huh. and everything else. Yeah. We're us. We're in, we're in wetsuits. We're... You know, it's we're moving around. It's not like we're acting like we're sick or we're dead in one little spot. Um, that was okay. the big thing that was told is like, you know, hey, if you get one close, you know, wave your hands. Um, they only get three feet away. Yeah, three feet away. Yeah, they violated that personal space quite a few times. I guess one, I was looking to the right, and when they're the people above were trying to get my attention, and I guess one swam right by my belly. And when I was looking to the right, oh. it was left and started swimming. So I guess it came like right next to me. Oh. But of course, you can't. So, when when you have the bigger waves, and I'm I'm basically hanging on to the the rope, getting pulled by the you know, because I'm getting yanked around. And then we have jellyfish, and then we have baby jellyfish. And we have little seaweed floating by. Um, it was a oh. very unique experience, and I felt calm. And that's when I started like singing. I was like, well, you know what? This is kind of cool. I'll slow down my breathing just by singing and everything else. Um, if anybody's never gotten snorkeling before, it's a unique experience. Right. It's great. Yeah, I want to do once once the summer gets here a little bit more and it's a little calmer. I want to do a whole video um, out there um, and do something where I'm kind of calling out other content creators and seeing, like, for people like, oh, you know, you know, send this to your favorite content creator. Let's get as many out here as we can to to see how many people actually do. So a lot of people are still terrified of sharks because of movies and all that other stuff yeah. and that is all bs it's not real uh sharks are completely amazing animals um you know i never really cared for them too much until i met like my wife she she did a lot of work with them in college and stuff um and then i met my my buddy that does the boat stuff so um it's it's definitely an interesting turnaround when you actually can educate people more on these animals than what they fear from jaws yeah. <laughs> i mean if, we, yeah, if, 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 if the other camera guy has 
footage. He's gonna he said he would send it. So it's just a matter of time. Like I said, I got I got the boat going out and the shoreline. But as soon as we hit those waves, the cameras got put away, and it was, it was too rough. It's a safety thing. It's you know, so yeah, I have a sure. camera here in my hand, and I'm hanging on a rope underneath the water here. What's what's more safe? With never swimming yeah. in the ocean besides the day before. Right. I got to swim with some nurse sharks, and they were. I mean, we were touching them and everything, and some sea rays. It was pretty cool. Well, we now found out. Remember, with my knee, my injured knee. Uh, whether or not I'm going to sink or swim around the circle while I was yeah. hanging on the rope. So that's all that matters. So. <laughs> now, Joe knows what it feels like to be a piece of bait when somebody's trolling for fish. Wait a second here. <laughs> you put the bait in the box and dragged it by the rope, and I was getting dragged by the rope too. Wait, they're, they're, so close they're going for great whites. That's what it was. They said this, this yeah, is yeah, they're, they're, Right now there's here. currently three uh, great whites on the East Coast, and one of them the other day was spotted um, about an hour south of where we were oh uh, no so we were we were hoping we could maybe see see the great white but we we unfortunately did not oh would you have gotten out of the water at that point heck no no <laughs> no i would have tried to swim with it <laughs> oh my gosh oh but the thing is everybody's getting these stigmas from watching jaws and jaws 2 and uh shark yeah. hurricane and stuff like this right shark Sharknado. The thing is, like, I Shark went there. I didn't feel threatened at all. Not mm -hmm. one, not one time. With even the right. all the sharks swimming, by, I didn't feel threatened at all. I mean, you had professionals that were with you. You had captain above. You had Will there. We had the two other people that Wait, had. You said I'm not professional. Just professionals. <laughs> <You said laughs> professional and then Will. Oh, yeah. and then Will. <laughs> <laughs> we had professionals. Will's a professional. Um, I didn't feel threatened at all. I didn't feel like I was in harm's way at all. Um, even with the big swells and everything else, it is, you know, it is what it is. It's, I mean, right. What do you do? You either A, take a chance and go out there and yeah, you're going to get seasick and everything else. Or B, you just came down here and you did nothing. Right. So it's, right. Let's, let's, let's go ahead and do it. And, and I had fun. I'd probably come out here again when it, the weather is kind of calm and, and do it again and bring more Recording equipment. I think that would be beautiful to have the recording equipment for that. Yeah. Yeah. But now you know what to expect too. So. Oh yeah. But I'll you tell you this: the Dramamine. I mean, I think the Dramamine we took did some help because it's not like the whole time we we're like you watch on a Deadliest Catch where there's over and it's nonstop. Puke. I mean, we had it where you know you're in the boat, and you're going up and down and like this. But if you once you get in the water, you're not in the boat that's going up and down. You're going with the waves. Right. So that helped out a lot. I don't. I don't know when I looked in back. I don't know if it was when you. That's why I got sick because there were so many sharks and me being the handler. Um, you know, I have to make sure they stay around us. I have to constantly feed them. But then there were so many, and like I always know. You know, I told him too. Like when you're in the water, you keep your eye on the closest shark to you. So yeah. you have to constantly keep your head on a swivel. And I got so. I think what got me finally was looking around so much, plus the waves, and that's why. Yeah. That's why I got out of the water. And now my daughter's crying again. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We need to take our mid-morning break anyway. So this is uh, brought to you by, of course, our gracious sponsor right here below us, Joe thank from you. Joe's Shrimp Shack. We love you so much and thank you thank so you. much.
Yeah. Will just stop you writing. Yeah, can, can we go back to that to that that video of Joe riding a shrimp's cartoon? That was kind of funny. <laughs> so that, that is a, a pretty cool about, thing to it. <laughs> about three years ago, um, there's a gentleman that does like little cartoonish, and I wanted um, some of the cartoons made, and he actually made two of them for me. One was when I was part owner at New Wave Aquaria, so I was riding a shrimp. Jen was right, riding an SPS. Doug was riding a Scully. And it's like we had little like ones, and I said, well, can I get one for myself? And it was really good. So that's actually the Blackberry Shrimp that uh, I won the International Shrimp Contest with. So I decided oh, to make right. that up. Yeah. That's the one that got me, got me kind of out there. So, <laughs> Well, that works. Well, we're going to listen to y'all are in Florida. We're going to do Florida Man. Uh -oh. I can find it. Again. <laughs> What the heck? Nope, that ain't it. What happened? Where'd it go? There it is. Dog needs a love and home, take it to a shelter. But what do you do with a fish that's only in to murder? Florida man, will take the fish off your hands. Florida man, the one who understands you gotta change your plan. Call Florida man. Take established. Florida man, 3,000 gallons in. He doesn't have unlimited space for fish. Florida man, got a net in his hand. Florida man, and Father Fish is also there. Welcome back. All right. That's okay. right. Welcome Just, back. Let me share something real quick. We wanted to see this again. Okay. Oh, she got, she got it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got the pictures. Oh, so the <laughs> tattoos are identical to where he put the tattoos, too. That's funny. 
That's what I mean. The guy did like so. What he does is I, I can't even get a hold of him no more. Um, he says, "Hey, just grind him access on Facebook." He goes through all your Facebook pictures and stuff. I mean, the tattoos he had like I oops, was identical to wherever they, they creased. Um, my tribal. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, I got I got more of them that he that he did with me. They're just in my phone from the beginning of time. So that was pretty that would cool. Be a cool sticker. Yeah. yeah. That would be or great. even your logo, you know. So yeah. on the on the because we have autograph cards, we go down there. So I have yeah. one with Chris Luke up and myself. Um, the other one is me riding the, the shrimp. I also have that one too. Um, it's just half time when I go to shows, I always forget to pull those out and set them with. Usually I would leave them for Aqua Shell to carry them along, but we somehow yeah, I, I ain't them. never seen it. So <laughs> I'd have grabbed I'll bring it. Down, I'll bring it down in the next I'll remind time. you. But I'm going to make sure that Jess gets the information for Will's nonprofit. We can put it in the comments. Yes. Um, and then I'll share this on my page as well, too. So, Yes, definitely. But definitely. I don't think we're going to be able to sit here for the full two hours. There is no. little ones around here, and they're rambunctious. Yes. And, I'm uh, glad we just got you for the first hour. Yeah. Um, we got things to you know, go over, too. So it's completely understand. And we do thank you so much for uh, taking time out on your vacation to show First us. This <laughs> it's been seven years. With my That's boy. awesome. Oh, yeah. I'm always on vacation. <laughs> I'm so glad we got to see this side of wheel because I didn't understand right. exactly, you know, how far this right. went. Right. It goes pretty far. <laughs> yeah. So I'll keep on doing more. I'll Very keep on nice. doing more content and everything else too. I know I put one video out of swimming in the ocean for the first time. Then too, um, I'll yeah. just keep on doing some random videotapes here and see what we do. So I love that you guys. Was our short for the day. A shrimp tastic <laughs> yep. day. Um, we'll you too, y'all. Have fun. Oh, yeah. Keep having fun. Awesome. That was nice. <laughs> yes, that was a good. Good. I'm so glad we got to see the the inside of the and all of his critters. Animal lovers just like to see lots of animals. That's just how yes, it is. It is. It really is. I could I could I could watch it all day long. I mean, me and Animal Planet are tight. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're not interested in that kind of animal, just watching somebody else yeah. have them and take care of them. That's right. I always I, I'm not kidding you. I always wanted a skunk that was de-skunked always i but always wanted an otter i don't have and an otter and an otter but i don't have a bet around here we used and to a have a raccoon that would uh, now i had a raccoon a sucker that sucker when it hit, hit puberty Ooh. we had we had a baby raccoon too um my husband found it at work my first husband brought it home yeah. it was a little teeny tiny thing and I had a big tall bird cage, so uh, that was empty. So we brought that out. Yeah. And we called him Bandit, of course. But he loved mini marshmallows. And you would oh. hold that bag of marshmallows up and he was sticking little hands <laughs> in the ball. Yeah. Like, give me, yep. give me, give me. Yes. Oh, he was so cute. And um when he got big enough, I thought he could make it. We took and made him a cage out on the barn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we he was hanging on the wall on the cage and um and kept him there about a week, and then we just started leaving the door open, you know. And yeah. he stayed there a day or two, you know. Then one day they're just not there. Yeah, you could hear coons out by the pond. Yeah, the pond for the horses. Ours, we ended up because he was starting to bite, and Landon was little, and I didn't want him biting Landon. And Landon, yeah. and Landon was like three or four, and three or four year olds are gonna get into stuff, and I just didn't want him. I didn't want that to happen. So um, we ended up giving NARS to jo Joe's cousin. And he had kind of like that set up like you did in the backyard. Um, and that's what he did. He kind of just left the door open. And that coon, that raccoon, stayed in that backyard for years. He'd come and go. But he, that was his home. And it was yeah. pretty cool. So I he was ended up in a better place because... We would have probably kept him in a cage, we it you know a bigger cage, but and he it worked out really well. Um, but we had a deer that grew up. His mama was uh, ran down by some boys and oh no, throat. Well, he grew up hanging out in the horse pasture with the horses. Oh, and, uh, he hung around about seven or eight years. Of course, my brother is a hunter, but he's like uh, that one's off limits. Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. You know, so, and yeah. we had 300 some acres between family that, you know, with lots of it was wooded. So he mm -hmm. was the only one that hunted back there. So right, he got, to, he got to hang around a while. In fact, yeah. I would go out at night and ride my horse in the arena and uh -huh. he would come stand on the outside of the arena. Just watch. Just watch for a while yeah. and then, you know, then he was gone. He knew when nobody got hurt him. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, you guys, we have today the first, I don't even know what to really call it yet, um, shipping weather report. <laughs> yeah, weather report. Yeah. So the shipping report. The shipping, the report. shipping report. Yeah. Um, so I am not a weather person. And I was trying see. to figure Hang out on. how y'all are going to do this. Well, I'm not, and I'm not completely sure yet how i'm gonna do it exactly um i'm still kind of working on it but i do listen to the weather a lot um just because of where we live um i'm gonna pick a different one i have a different well i don't know that one came up pretty good i don't have to listen to any kind of news or anything because my husband he's Does on it, it. <laughs> yeah so he's like me um he's on it so i know that um, so up in the Northeast, it, they're getting snow and thunderstorms and snow, um, kind of mid, can y'all see my cursor? Is my cursor going over it? Can you see my I'm cursor? I'm seeing moving? you up around, uh, Colorado, Kansas. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. So that also is still snow. Um, I don't know for sure if it's sticking or not, you know, cause I don't know how warm they were, but um, all this is coming through this all right here, which would be what headed towards the West coast um, just on the other side of Louisiana. And it goes up is all thunderstorms, which will be getting worse over the next two days. Um, we're supposed, I need to go back in. We're supposed to be getting a lot of, bad weather over the next um like 38 36 48 hours mm -hmm. um kind of like last week where we had all the tornadoes and stuff mm -hmm. um it's supposed to be that another round of that we're not supposed to get as cold but for shipping wise you're pretty much gonna have to look at the top half of the united states it's still kind of cool and still getting some snow the bottom half of the united states mm -hmm. we're warming up and getting bad weather but that bad weather is going up and moving off to the west to the yeah west no east coast east yeah east coast and is also really bad weather so and it kind of goes on up on also all the way up into pennsylvania but then once it gets in on up in there up and up up high up here into the great lakes um it turns back into snow and ice all that blue dark blue stuff is snow and the green is rain that so looks like we're clear on the uh North carolina coastline for now yeah. but all that right there is supposed to be moving off that direction and the warmer you get the worse it, it's going to heat up i think so it's going to miss us i'm gonna i'm gonna so. gamble well, it looks to me like it's going to land closer to like um, Virginia. Okay. But I'm just guessing. I'm playing. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Where is... You're down here. Here's North Carolina right there. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You might... Well, you can see Jackson. Well... Mm, see yeah, I they have Jacksonville on the map. All right. I'm looking for it. Where at? Right above Wilmington. It's it's over there by where the Outer Banks are. Um, oh, I see it right there. Yep, that's where I'm at. There we go. Okay, so you're right there. And uh, Paul Subterra is down in Wilmington. And Paul's in Wilmington. I don't and know. You might get people, some of this people down here. are right in the middle of both of us. Oh wow. Okay, so how far are you going to be from the um, from 
the event next weekend, um, Aquaticon. Is that in oh, Charlotte? Yeah. See, that's no. all the way to the west end of the state. Well, no, that's just the one in ten Nashville, Tennessee, isn't it? I don't know. Aquaticon. Um, this is uh, James. No, yeah. J James. Yeah. It's in Tennessee, I think, or Kentucky. Tennessee. It's a long Tennessee. ride. So it's like three or four hour ride or like. Uh, it'd be longer than that. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Tennessee's right here. Y'all are over shrink, here. Shrink your Mac down. It's so big, I can't see. Shrink it back lot. down? Yeah. Okay, so we're looking at North Carolina, West Virginia. See, it takes me about five hours to get to the Virginia state line going up, like, along the coastline. Uh-huh. Now, there's, you know, different, uh, maybe you could cut across and not have to go that route, but I've never been yeah. to Tennessee. Right. But, um... I would say at least eight or nine hour drive. I'm just guessing. Okay. I mean, yeah. It's I mean, gonna, it's going to take me about 14 hours to get to the clash. Okay. Because, let's so see, I am right here, down here in Louisiana. Wait, let me get back mm -hmm. here. I'm right here in Shreveport. Right there. In Shreveport. Shreveport. Yep. And well, actually, Bozier, which, see this line right here? That mm -hmm. line is Red River. And so Shreveport is on this side of the river, and Bozier is on this side of the river. Okay. And I am actually about right there. About right there is where I live. About right there. Right there. Okay. About right there. Um, so if I was to make that kind of drive, it would be probably the panhandle of Florida, which would be about that long. So, yeah. I guess it would be that long. Hmm. So the question is, do you throw a heat pack in it if you ship in north or not? I would say you would. <laughs> like Pam says, they she woke up to a, a dusting of snow. Right. So. Well, I don't think I'm going to put a down heat in pack the thirties the snow. Um. I don't think I'm going to put a heat pack in yours. No, We're not warm. mine. Hippie John might need one. And he, Yeah, Hippie John may need one. Um, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to put one in Miss Holly. Well, was Miss Holly is in, shoot, I forgot. She's in. Um, See, John, my fish tank says Northern Illinois is in risk of severe weather Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah. Yep. Us too. Hey, land giraffe. Uh, what is MI? Said. MI is Minnesota or Michigan? Michigan? Michigan. Okay, so Miss Holly is in Michigan, so that one definitely needs a heat pack. Um, so yeah, but if you're shipping south, you really don't need one. Mm -hmm. As long as it keeps warm, you keep it warm, or unless maybe you just put like a 30 hour heat pack in it. Um, I wish there was a heat pack that you could set on a timer and it wouldn't start <laughs> until, you know, it got that timer or alarm went off. That right. would be like a perfect. Well, there's somebody out there that could create such a thing. Yeah. I mean, it, it that would be perfect. Cause that's, a, I mean, it is, that's an issue. Like maybe it wouldn't cost more. a few dollars though. <laughs> it would cost well, but it, I thought it would be so worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because once they got their fish, they could ship it back. They could, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. That. Oh my gosh, that would be so perfect. Um, because it takes a gamble on putting a heat pack, especially down here right now. I put a heat pack in it, and then I'm shipping it north, which is going to take three days, at least, to get to Miss Holly. So the heat pack. Is going to be working in 80 degree weather. Right. So, but you know, now, like, like if, if, say, if Joe was to be sending me some shrimp, yeah, he's up north where it's cold yeah. and it may sit overnight or so. Yeah. In a truck or whatever. Right. Building. So, yeah. by the time it got to me where it's warm, he'd still have to put a heat pack because. 
Yeah, but like he could put like a 30 year, you know, a smaller yeah. outward heat a pack. Smaller. Me, I'm going the opposite way. So yeah. it's harder, you know, it's harder to, um, cause I can't just, well, I mean, I will, but it's just, I wish it was the opposite. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but I just put extra water in there. So that'll okay. help. The extra water will help with the heat down here. So it Ed says it takes him about an hour and a half to get to James's house. And he's like a hundred miles away. Yep. But it takes him 50 minutes to get to Bob's house and he's only 20 miles away, but the way the mountain is. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, John said that he was only about 20 minutes away from Whip's World yesterday. Huh. Well, there you go. So it will get better. Um, my little shipping report. Um, since we had, um, I was working yesterday and then I was, had a lot going on. So I haven't gotten to do what I really, really want to do with the shipping weather report exactly yet. So it'll get a little bit funner. Um, but I did want to start it today. So Ricky, Arby animals and movies. How are you? It's good to see you. And we did have some other people come in. We got Dreamfish Keeping, Whips World, that I did not get to exactly say hi to. Um, Lane, Lane, Land Giraffe. Land Giraffe. Good morning. Welcome. To Cooley came in. They have snow up there where Lane Giraffe is. Crypt Keeper um, came in. Crypt Keeper. Okay, Melvin. Um, if you want to read, try to explain to me what you were trying to explain to me earlier. <laughs> you can do that now. I did. I don't understand what you're wanting me to do. Exactly. A rebate. Yeah. It's, I don't know. Yeah. So re say that if you would like, and I will try to figure that out. Um, you guys, we have misfit. Well, hang on. First, we have ABC Biotope Creations. They are almost to their 500. We need to help them out. Oh, they should um, be really close. Very close. You want to see how close? Yes. Okay. All right. What happened? Bookly Bell, we had to tie our trampoline to two fences to make sure that it doesn't fly away in the wind we've had over the last few days and plus all the tornadoes that keep coming through here. 449. Golly. 449. And he is going to do um, a giveaway as well. I'm not real sure what it is though. Um, and then we have Misfit. He is also at 200. Um, he will be doing a giveaway of two long, two sets of Albino, long fin albino plecos and two sets of star sapphire cichlids. And then if he makes it to the 250 by the time he gets to the show to do the $200 giveaway, not $200 giveaway, $200 subs, um, he's going to give away some flower horns and some Harlequin resboras. So please make sure y'all are subscribed to these guys. Um, as well. Let's the fish fam help everybody out. And we have a new member. Well, Dream Fish Keeping, welcome Yay, to okay. being a part of the Aquatic Morning Show. And this is for you. <laughs> did it Thank play all the way my computer messed up yeah okay because i could see it on my phone but it's like i'm not seeing it on my computer yeah it did um brooklyn uh, 
I'll have to try to do that. My husband almost threw it away because he was so mad about having it flip in four weeks in a row. Our kids love it so much. I'm glad he didn't do that. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> um, so we had, we're on our number two trampoline because the first one took flight and crushed our, in one side of our back porch. Um, it they will look flight. like a spaceship. <laughs> yes. I mean, that sucker just took up and boom. Yep. And uh, it fifed it to the side and shoved it in. Um, and then, um, so this one in, when we got it, we tied it off. Um, so it's tied to two different fences. It's in the corner of the yard. So it's tied to two different fences. Um, but those ropes that are holding it are beginning to dry rot. And so yeah. I told Joe the other day and Landon that they needed to go replace the ropes, you know, um, because I seen the trampoline bouncing the other day. That's when the trampoline starts bouncing. Most I'm already freaked out, but when it starts out, I really start panicking. Greg says the wind blew you off the lake yesterday. The wind has been unimaginable here. Uh, like, for us too. Why? What the heck? But uh, Glass Box here, I said he's at 421. All right, 421. You're getting up there. So, yeah, I know it takes time, you guys, but, you know, just when you're cruising through and watching people's streams, just, you know, make sure you're still sub to other people in the streams. Um, and I know that they will return that as well. I know I return all of mine. So um, if I get a sub, I return that sub. So uh, Melvin was saying... Okay, let's see. That remember in 2020 that <laughs> the live stream called Fish Fam Radio 96 USA and everyone loved it. So I decided to bring it back. So I am relaunching it again under Tank Club Radio 96 USA. Okay, so how do you find it? Where do you find it? Oh, and today is the drawing for the Peru. That's trip. right. The raffle that's, today. And that's after the morning show, correct? Yeah, one thirty he comes on. At 1.30. Time. That's right. Exciting, exciting stuff. I don't know if Rico's going today. <laughs> Doc. I am 28. Yay. He is not. He's in his 200 something. I think he <laughs> typed that wrong. <laughs> Probably 280. Maybe he left the zero off. Because we hooked him up that very first day. That's right. We try to do that. He's at 398. <laughs> Brooklyn, oh, t -t 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 I'm telling him y'all's trampoline took flight before. Maybe he'll realize that it actually happens. Girl, it'll happen. You won't even know. Like, you won't even realize that it can be, it'll be a gust of wind that picks that sucker up and blows it. I mean, just out of nowhere. 398. So he's two away from 400. Yeah, our trampoline, it picked up, went over the top of the shed, into the woods behind, it turned upside down and dropped. Oh, no. But now we put sandbags on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I brought Rico. you with me, Rico, because I didn't know if I was going to have a co-host, so at least I didn't feel lonely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a doctor's appointment this morning, and so it's the one that I have every month, and I always make it at 8 o'clock, so I'm the first one in there. And I'm always, you know, running back home um, and barely make it by the hair on my chinny chin chin. And it, I did. I made it this morning about almost 15 minutes till. So I was able to run in, change clothes, and be here a minute till. <laughs> well, we had a meltdown in the house this morning. Seven, oh, so. no. Well, my husband got the, my kid up for school, and it's her spring break. I don't have to 
can't just go. Why do you wake me up? <laughs> Which we're like, yay, we don't have school this week. Right. So yes. You might not see me the rest of the week because we're going <laughs> to get out and do some things and because we don't we're not restricted to being stuck for right. Sure. Understandable, girl. I know tomorrow we're going to Wilmington. She has a gastric uh, specialist appointment. Okay. So we'll be in Wilmington tomorrow morning. But then he wants to go get new phones on a day. And, you yeah. Know, well, there like, you okay. go. Yeah. Oh. You're allowed. I, I do believe we have a birthday boy in the house. Do we? I S think that's it is. It is. It is your birthday. Well, happy birthday from the Aquatic Morning Show. This is for you. Happy birthday to happy you. Birthday. It's your day. Don't throw it away. I've come to celebrate in a big way. Another year. So come on and cheer. It's the birthday of last frontier. Happy birthday to you. Making me feel fine I wish the day would never come to an end So come on and party And one day you will see That it's your birthday Happy birthday to you So happy birthday very much. Happy and birthday. it's also uh, new local Austin, but he showed up <laughs> as Michael Toes. And he didn't tell me in advance, you nasty boy. Oh, well, this is for you, sir. <laughs> happy birthday to happy you. Birthday. It's your day. Don't throw it away. I've come to celebrate in a big way. Another year. Come on and cheer, it's the birthday of Last Frontier. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. We're having a good time, making me feel fine. I wish today would never come to an end. Come on and party, and one day you will see that it's your birthday. Happy birthday to you. So happy birthday, New Local Austin. Yeah, every, if anybody knows of somebody's birthday coming up, drop me a little birdie because I like to put it in the uh, the uh, lineup. Yes. Get it time, but I have to do it the day before. Yes. Um, so, I did not have time to do my coffee cup, but we do have two coffee cup sponsors right now. We've got Miss Dee Dee is one. And Miss Lori, our wonderful mod, is the second one. Um, but we're going to play the old one that has um, them on it. Oh, has, we are. Has, yeah, let's just go ahead and play that old one. Um, get back to that. And um, then we'll get that, that fixed. But the round table is always open for more coffee cups to sit at, you guys. So... Bring some more coffee cups, sponsors. And we're also looking for an end of month sponsor for April. So if you are interested, let me know. Send an email to me. It is so hard for me to get back to StreamYard when I start going into the other. I can't tell where I'm at. Uh-oh. And then you go into something that's not, it's just a search thing. Uh-huh. But 
Here we go. All right. I just realized what I did. <laughs> what you do? I'm, I'll tell you later. If nobody caught it. I'm oh. not gonna say anything. <laughs> okay. oh, God, I didn't realize I was on camera. Still, I thought I was behind. Oh. Um, I'll be back to myself soon. Poor Ed still has a way to go, but I'm a little mouse. Told me we might see him this week. Oh, well, it will be great to see the both of you. Rico said he won't be going today. Yeah. Uh, T's Fish Tanks, good morning to you. And what? Excuse me. Welcome. <laughs> um, Miss D, do you have the lineup for today? I sure do. Let me get that back up. Uh -huh. Eric, why run? Yeah. Um, Bob's awesome. And I know I seen Shanna Banana in here earlier. Yeah, she was in here maybe getting ready for work. Yeah. The working woman. Yes. Bless her heart. Here we go. And now for the Monday live stream. At Eastern Standard Time, we started off with Father Fish at time. Following that was the Aquatic Morning Show on Maine's Tales for Ideas at 10. And at 12.15, it's going to be Afternoon Chat Delight with Pico Stan. And Dr. Anthony at 1.30 on the Aquarium Conservation with Dr. Anthony from Fort Cobb. Three PM peek out with Ed and Rico. At four, it's Corvus Posse. Five, Stephen P and Kelly with Wet Your Plants. Six is Monday Musings with Fantastic Freaks. That's Austin. And seven, Monday Mayhem with Mr. and Mrs. Metalhead. And eight, Bob Steenfog. Steenfog Aquatics. At 8 30, it's Lefty 3213A. Members on the street. And to put in the Monday Guide lineup, especially because aquatics are in the hot spot at 10 p.m. Just how hot will it get in there? And Liquid Zoo, Matt, thanks for making this information easy to find at fishfan.org. Making me some more coffee. We're getting gra 
we're getting what? <laughs> we're getting oh <laughs> there you go. Steven. <laughs> okay, Steven says we're getting gassy today with the wet your plants episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh, fish tanks. Thank you, T. Thank you so much. This is for you. I can find it. There it goes. <laughs> I love that. Too coolie for schoolie. And thank you. Good morning to you, uh, Bunny Viper. Good morning. And again, thank you, T. I really do appreciate it. <laughs> Kelly. Loading up on the uh, salsa. <laughs> so we're going to learn about some gases. <laughs> right. And I did see a poetic oh. song. Good morning. Good to see you. Um, no, Rico's not going to go live today. Yeah. I always put it in there if it's in the lineup, just in case. Yeah. Right. <laughs> He'll let us know, and, and he always lets us know in chat. Leo 209 Aquatics, good to see you. Good morning. Welcome, and thanks for coming. Um, You have to go back and watch the replay. It was a good stream this morning. We got to see a whole bunch of different animals. <laughs> Right, Eduardo. Who are these people coming in at the end? They <laughs> wake up. This is the west. The west coast waking up. They do some coffee <laughs> in their cup. That's right. Y'all look that how good is. Fish Fam is. Now this tank was empty February when I had the uh, epistylus. Look at that. Look at that. All those plants. That's from Fish Fam. That's right. And not only that, but the help on how to do it and the discount to get the RODI from Joe Shrivjack and this, the Wet Your Plant series. Oh, it's just Fish Fam is awesome. Yes, the Fish Fam is awesome. Yes, I know Eduardo is not on the East Coast. I mean, West Coast. He's on the Eduardo East Coast. Eduardo is everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. He was on Skippers yesterday. Oh, it was a hoot. I sat here for two hours last night after I had shut down my computer to go to bed. Uh -huh. I just spun around and I just watched this tank for two yeah. hours. Yep. I wish I wish I had more time to enjoy mine. Well, I said I need to get to bed. I need to get to bed. I need to get to bed. But it's like, oh, oh, look at that one. Oh, oh, it's going through the ballast there. Oh, oh. And then, yeah. and then I just sit here for, and then it's two hours have gone past. I could have listened to another stream. Yeah. You know, just, I get mesmerized. Uh-huh. And that RODI system has made my life so easy compared yeah. to the way it was with the water. Yes. Oh, and that RODI system has, Does the plants just kind of like better water? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to. Oh, Lord, T gets up at 5 a.m. and that's sleeping in. I used to be that way too. I used to have to get up at 3 30, T. Those days are over when you get old. That can, can happen for you. Retirement's awesome. I can't wait. You have to get old to do it, stop. but most of us do, anyways. <laughs> but. It's better than never reaching it after you work all your life. Yeah. Okay. I got a poll up real quick. Right here at the end. Debbie real Wilson. fast. My name is Debbie. Um, do you like this background? Yes or no? Like this one right here. Not that one. This one. And am I clear <laughs> to y'all? Do we have do we have options to choose from or 
Um, yeah. Or, well, were not, you asking, do we like just the tank shining in the background or the background? What are we asking? Yeah. Do you like that? this or do you care for nothing and just my tanks behind me? Pretty much okay. the normal or this. I don't think I have another like news thing. I mean, I could get one, but um, I don't have one on like, downloaded. Um, so you've misfit likes the tanks. Do what? Misfit said he likes the tanks. However, I like the background. I now, like this. Uh, different backgrounds be fun to see a different one yeah he eduardo likes the nude tanks butters <laughs> <laughs> what he what doesn't nude? say better he says butters <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's our city good morning why does it do oh, okay there it goes well, we got 55 at yes, 45 at no. <laughs> 57 at yes. It won't let Poetic Song click. It won't? Mm -mm. Well, since she doesn't like the one I don't like, that I like, it's okay. <laughs> um, I'm rigging the, the boat. Is it? I mean, it should let everybody... Even if you're not subscribed, it should let you, I think. Oh, Sun sorry, City. Scotty. Scotty Surf was City in an accident. Cichlids. Do what? Scotty, Scott Squats was in an accident. Rear end of the vehicle yesterday. Now both my legs are hurting pretty bad. Did you go to the <laughs> hospital, Scott? <laughs> sorry. I hope you. Oh, I hope you're okay. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, a real big fender bender month for everybody. Not everybody, um, but a lot of people. We had two on um, one day: Sherry, uh, Mississippi, <laughs> and Eduardo. Right. Um, poetic oh, song. Oh. Are you subscribed to the channel? I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Um. Now, um, I think they finally, she finally did get to do it. Ha ha. It let me click. Yes. And what let me to click? No. So my vote is wrong. Oh. <laughs> you go. Oh. It, it knew what to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Good. I'm glad it let you, even though it did the wrong one. <laughs> well, hopefully Scotty gets. Okay. Yeah. God, the day yeah. after hurts. And the next always. day after the day after always hurts worse than the day of. Thank you, oh, Poetic. Hello, Song. Jennifer Weaver. It's such a grand day. All right. Her Congrats. Security at the moment. Yay! Congrats. Yay. It's always a big day to get that first SS check. <laughs> Man. I don't I won't I won't have a I don't even know that I'll have one. <laughs> like, Ooh. I don't think I worked enough for other people to have right, one. Right. Like maybe the first 10 years of my working life I did, but I think the most I made was $14 at the most. I mean, you can, you can pay in, but, um, I don't think we do that for the taxes. I think, all I pay is what I have to, you know, I don't think I'm paying anything extra. As, as most people do the self-employed. Right. And but well, it, Joe's retirement though is my security. Um, Cause I'm vetted because he's vetted. So we've been married for 10 years and he's been in the service for 10 years. So we're both vetted. <laughs> if something was to happen to him, I still get the retirement. Um, so, I'm not, we, we really don't worry about it. Um, and then we've got so much to sell if needed to. I mean, equipment, you know, but. Oh, yeah. But. Yeah. I mean, you do what you got to do to survive. 
Okay. Steven says, just the aquatic morning show background needs to be aquatic, regardless if it's real green screen. Well, see, you're doing it for the news aspect, but right. I kind of agree. I would like to see some aquatic fish. myself. Some more fish. Yeah. Maybe spin your globe in the corner or something, you know, for like newsy, but yeah. Uh, I like actual seeing something in water, but I I do like the green screen instead of that fish tank light back there blaring at at you. Yeah, yeah, that sucker is bright, isn't it? And I try yeah. to turn it so that it's not, but I don't even have it on so that we I can go, <laughs> so we could make the green screen work. And it is, I think, working better. I don't. I, don't, oh, yeah. I think I'm pretty sure. clear this today than what I, I have been. Oh, yes. And may, may I please? <laughs> That's right. You do have a bed up there. I do have a bed up. And then my logo is right there and there. <laughs> yeah. But I understand. Yeah. Uh, it also kind of looks like you might be in a jail cell with the bars right there. <laughs> It doesn't look like I'm in the newsroom. News from the inside. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Lordy. <laughs> oh, my goodness, you guys. We are coming to the end of the show today. I do want to thank Will and Ants and um, Joe from Joe Shrimp Shack for coming on this morning and showing us all the cool animals that Will's got. Um while Joe is on vacation down there with him. Um, it was a spur of the moment thing. Um, tomorrow, though, we have Miss Alyssa Bentley. So if you don't know who Miss Alyssa Bentley is, she is sometimes a co-host with Corvus Os Os Oskin. 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 Um, so we're going to learn about her individual from him. So that will be, it's going to be a fun morning tomorrow as well. And so don't forget, we still have the blind fish keeper challenge going on. Brooklyn and Steven got theirs done. Um, yeah, the blind scape's still going. Um, and today we find out about the Peru trip. Peru trip. That's yes. right. And I'm just going to say up front that if you win and you don't want to go, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was see, Whip has a ticket and he's not, I don't think he's going to be going. So, yeah, I wasn't able to purchase a ticket. Um, so, yeah, but I do want to go. So, if <laughs> you don't, I do. <laughs> All right. I need my google calendar so we can show what we got going on oh and if you have not seen uh um, right. garcia aquatics um tour at creative coral design he has a really cool video touring their facility good go check that out too and bex had an awesome birthday stream Yes, that was such a good stream. Yes. Okay, that one's over. Um, okay, I guess we're starting with this. So, we're going to go out, you guys, with the schedule. And I'll run through the whole schedule. So, it'll be about a minute, minute, two minutes at max. Um If you're looking to see if you know what whatever's coming up, I think the closest thing there's Reefa Palooza this month. There's um, Eduardo wants to know if he's getting something from you today. From me mm -hmm. today? Yes, that's what he's asking. N no, not today. I'll call. I'll I'll talk to you. Um. Things are fasting, correct? Well, I had things fasting, but not for Eduardo. 
Oh, okay. Um, I'll talk to him. Um, Aquaticon, you guys, is also coming up at the end of the month. This has been in two years making <laughs> Knoxville Expo Center, April 30th. Okay. Yes. So buddy. that is um, James Fish Room Fever. That's his event that he's got with um, what's the name of the, the, the guy that's actually the head guy of it. Um, I don't know. He has a store, the pet store. Oh, and he's on with you guys with Bob on Sundays. Oh, Rob, uh, Rob. Aquatic Aesthetics. Yes, Aquatic Aesthetics. There you go. That's the head honcho kind of with James over that, I believe. So I did not realize that. Yeah. Oh, he said Stephen P. must be sending him something. Okay. And Stephen did have a million boxes Jenna made up for him last week. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, all right, you guys. In the morning, again, we have Alyssa Bentley. It's going to be another good stream. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you for the super chats and the new members. Welcome Yay. to the Aquatic Morning Show. Okay. And I hope you do enjoy it. And we will see you guys in the morning. Thanks for coming. Love y'all.